Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Starting off on the news at noon, David Elder standing by in the KSAT garden. He is gearing up for a big event featuring award-winning chefs. This noon, we've got details on how you can join in all the fun. Plus, in a few minutes, we are cooking up one of San Antonio's favorites, what we're famous for, our tacos. And fiesta season is fun and colorful, but there's so much more going on that planning ahead can help you have a stress free fiesta, including how to avoid parking issues during some of those more popular events. We are getting you ready for the party with a purpose this noon. New this noon, the Evalde police chief announcing a plan to overhaul the policies, practices and procedures of the Uvalde Police Department. The city now calling this the Guardian Initiative. It's set to involve a government-wide review of past actions, including one-on-one -on -one interviews with every UPD officer. Chief Homer Delgado will also review department policies. The department says it also plans to dedicate time to training and making sure officers have the right equipment. This announcement comes less than a week after Chief Delgado announced sweeping changes will be coming to UPD's structure and operations while reviewing policy and procedures and personnel. It is the fifth day of Miranda Casares' trial. Today, the defense began their case saying the state's got it all wrong. Casares charged with starving her stepson to death. Benjamin Cervera was only four years old when he died in August of 2021. And last Friday, the state rested, and today the defense finally giving their opening arguments. Our Erica Hernandez is at the Justice Center and is joining us now alive. So, Erica, what did the opening statements reveal about their case? Yeah, David and Ursula, most of their case is attacking the medical examiner's report and ruling saying that it was starvation. They are saying SAPD gave Dr. Kimberly Molina misinformation that led to that ruling. Now, the defense will be putting up two doctors to counter Dr. Molina's testimony and say there was no true evidence of starvation. The defense also saying that Benjamin was born premature and had always been underweight at the time of his death, had not been diagnosed with autism which is what they believe led to his regression. Casares is facing an injury to a child charge in this case of the bent saying she is not a monster and loves children and that the months leading up to Benjamin's death she was taken to he she had taken him to several doctors appointments and nobody had said anything to her about his weight or starvation so it will be interesting to see what those two doctors how ha have to say and how they contradict Dr. Molina's testimony we'll have more on that later this afternoon Ursula David so, Erica, when you're talking about a child, always emotions running high in courtrooms. What has Casares' demeanor been like? Yeah, at times we have seen Miranda Casares get emotional in the courtroom through, throughout testimony, and that was the same today when the defense during op opened their opening arguments, explaining about her being a loving mother and loving to Benjamin as well. Is the jury going to get to deliberate soon on this case, you think? Um, that could come as early as tomorrow. It could be tomorrow afternoon or we possibly push to Wednesday. It'll be interesting to see how this day kind of plays out with the defense's uh, experts on the stand and what the, then the state will get to be able to rebut that. And I assuming Dr. Molina is there in the courtroom that they would be putting her back on the stand as well. But by, by midweek, we should have a verdict in this case. All right, we'll continue to follow it. Thank you so much, Erica Hernandez reporting live from the Justice Center. The new at noon, a 19 year old is still missing after he went underwater and didn't come back up. This happened last night at Canyon Lake. The crews back at the scene this morning, they tell us Juanier Alejandro Rojas Pierrier of San Antonio has was floating on a tube when he drifted toward the water intake near the Canyon Lake Dam. Deputy said he became separated from his tube and began to wave for help. The sheriff's office said a witness tried to rescue him, but that was unsuccessful. A protest on the war in Gaza, in San Antonio, shutting down two roads on the city's northwest side today. Protesters gathering near the Valero headquarters, which is located on one Valero Way, just off of Loop 1604. A press release had said that the activists formed a blockade at Valero headquarters to, quote, take a stand against the global economy's complicity, com complicity 
into the ongoing genocide in Palestine, end quote. The search continues for the person who killed two men at a home near North Foster Road this past weekend. San Antonio police say it was around 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning when someone fired shots at the home on Delgado Run. According to SAPD, the victims, Marquise Green and DeMaria Grenage, were standing at the garage when they were killed. Investigators are trying to figure out what led to the shooting, and they're investigating the case as a capital murder. Outside with live cam, it's one of those days where the breeze is blowing, so you might feel a little pinch of cold, but then you can feel the humidity, and that takes away the little pinch of cold. <laughs> Pretty much. It's uh, it's sticky and warm out there, David. There's no doubt about it. And you're right about the wind. We're going to see gusty winds all the way into the afternoon. In fact, winds may pick up a little bit before it's all said and done. Let me show you the satellite picture. So clouds are having a huge, play a huge role here when it comes to the temperatures. Uh, we're still seeing the overcast sky. So that's going to keep temperatures in check so it doesn't get too warm. But places that are seeing the sun, well, we're already in the 80s. 82 Pleasanton, 83 in Kennedy right now, 82 in Carrizo Springs. The sun's starting to shine in Rock Springs, but still cool there, 73 and 77 right now in San Antonio, although we should be in the 80s here soon, despite the fact skies are overcast. Let's go outside for you. There may be a little sun trying to peek through there at the airport. 80 in Seguin, 73 right now in Kerrville, and relative humidity is high across the board. You'll feel it, and in fact, the humidity may even go a little bit higher before it's all said and done this week. Here's our forecast for today. I think skies stay mostly cloudy into the evening hours. Then we'll watch for a couple of showers, maybe a storm overnight. Rain chances aren't huge. We're talking 20% here, but this is around midnight. And then by 2 a.m., maybe a couple of showers uh, working in the San Antonio. We got a weak boundary that tries to get here by tomorrow morning. It just doesn't have a whole lot of success. So 20% chance of rain tonight. We're in the 80s next couple of days. We're going to talk more about that Fiesta forecast for you coming up in just a bit. Just look forward to that. April is Autism Acceptance Month or Autism Awareness Month. And tomorrow we're going to be hosting a KSAC Community Town Hall called Understanding Autism. Guests are going to be joining Tiffany Huertas to answer any questions you may have, help raise awareness, and promote acceptance. You can tune into the Town Hall tomorrow at 2 o'clock, KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, or the KSAT YouTube channel is where you want to go. The Town Hall will be followed by the Walk for Autism coming up this Saturday at Palo Alto College. Hey guys, guess where we are? We're in the KSAT kitchen. Well, that garden kitchen. It's, with, it's, it's, the, it's an outdoor kitchen. With David Elder, <laughs> he's putting me to work. We're going to be That's promoting right. a new event yes. for Elder Eats or Texas Eats. And we're going to be making we're what? Make we're making steak tacos today. It was one of my favorite recipes to make because it's so easy and it's delicious. And what really sets this one recipe apart is making your own fresh green yes, salsa. Yes, that makes such a big difference. You have to. And so we have the steak is over here on the grill and we're letting oh. that kind of figure itself out over there. Yeah. You can see, you know when the flies like it, it means it's going to be good. So we're knocking flies away. But you're bringing the steak over here. We're going to be cutting into that. But I want to talk about what's over here before we get to the event information. So we have mesquite charcoal on the grill and we have tomatillos on the bottom, jalapenos Ooh. on there, onions, cilantro on there as well, fresh garlic. We're going to give it all a big spin <laughs> in just a few minutes. That's right. And we're also going to talk about a big event that you have yes. planned coming up in just a couple of weeks. I know. It's the first ever Texas Eats Food Festival, and we're going to go into all the details coming up. But I'm so excited because tickets are available now. Okay. This is always a special day here at KSAT when David hits the stoves out here. <laughs> all of the burners start going. Everybody goes into the KSAT kitchen waiting for the results and we're gonna give you a treat in just a few minutes who wants a homemade taco I do <laughs> and everybody in the building does yes. too and David as well yeah that's right we're gonna be sharing with you guys a very delicious easy steak taco recipe to celebrate the kickoff of selling the tickets for the upcoming Texas Eats Food Festival, the inaugural uh, festival for us, and we're so excited. I am excited for you. I've I contacted every chef I know in town. Yes, and said, you did. You gotta be there. Yes. Uh, this is important because Texas food is on the map worldwide right now. Tacos in particular, we've got some uh, 
follow me over here. We <laughs> have got some beautiful steak that we have grilled up. Oh yeah, beautiful. We're gonna make these tacos with a, a little salsa that is homemade salsa. And That's this right. is something I just learned. I said, well, what's in here? Uh, we're gonna put in this uh, salsa, we've got tomatillas that have already been grilled. We've got onions, we've got cilantro. What else is in here? Um, onions, garlic, jalapenos, tomatillos. And then I put a little bit of water on the bottom to help blend it all together. And of course, the big secret, I right did here, not know this. Chicken bouillon powder. I put this stuff in everything, man. I tell you what, and I saw a gentleman who used to own Mexican restaurants. How's it going? We used to own Mexican restaurants and he shared his secret. He said this is how they would season it in the restaurant chicken bouillon. I had no idea. And this is the easy stuff because it's just a powder. You don't have to open the oh, cubes yeah. or anything oh, like yeah. that. You don't have to crunch them up so or anything. You're ready to ready? Rock. on top. Okay. So it's ready I'm to go. I'm holding the top as as uh, directed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it go. That's perfect right there. Right there. And nice, we're done. chunky salsa. Yeah, that's right. And so we're going to keep that. We're going to build off these tacos. And in the meantime, I just want to talk about the event. Now it's yes. May 11th, Saturday, and it's happening at Smoke Sky Bar in downtown San Antonio, also known as Smoke Barbecue. And we're super excited to be welcoming 20 of the top rated award-winning chefs in this area, including a chef from in Austin, Cade Mercer from CM Smokehouse is coming out as well. Oh, nice. I know, he got a write up in Texas they Monthly Magazine. They are awesome. Yeah, and he, he reinvented the crunch wrap. Everybody loves crunch wraps, Taco Bell has them, but he made it his own thing and he made it like with Texas barbecue. I hope that's what he's bringing to the event as well. Yum. But he's got great bites. We have Jason Dady. Um, we have Johnny Hernandez, Nicola Black, Steve McHugh. I these mean, are award-winning chefs. These are like James Beard nominated award-winning chefs, big names that we're having out there. And there's 20 of them, so I'm gonna many keep more. making my taco yes, while you're- Yes, keep going. So you okay. have a little cotija cheese off to the side. And I always have to get Ursula's approval on everything I make out here. A little bit of cilantro. A little oh, bit of I gotta have a little onion. Oh, here you go. And I love an avocado. Yes, and look, I slice these up for you. Nice and thin, you did good. Yeah, that's right. And, and then a little bit of salsa, not too much. I don't want to burn you. How about if we do this? But you know what, you like you like spicy. Ooh, looky, looky. And, look, and then a little bit of lime juice on top. Ready? That's another eyes. little trick, right? That's right. And that's right there. That's gonna be the perfect bite. I love that right there. So you right go there. first, Ursula, and I'll keep talking, okay? You let me know what you think, I'm though. not as well-versed at eating on camera <laughs> as you and David Sears, but yes. I'll give it a try. Well, David Sears, he takes the bite, mm. and he just kind of hangs out. He lets it just kind of, he figures out the bite when he hangs. What do you think, mm. though? It, it's got all the elements, right? Mm -hmm. You have the crunch and the texture from the white onion. The mm -hmm. cilantro is bringing those aromatics, the meat. You can see it's a beautiful cook on there. You have a nice medium finish. The avocado is creamy. Everything is, is so fresh yes when you make it like this oh you have to you and, have the, and to. the creaminess of the avocado to me is the greatest finish oh for sure i didn't put a lot of cheese oh yeah um, um i don't don't think it needs it with the avocado that's one of the beautiful Ooh. things about an avocado is that it kind of it's a good good healthy fat it is a good healthy fat you go what is it the ldls mm -hmm. your hdls and your ldls right so mm -hmm. you got to get the good fats in there i'm going to put some right here check this out y'all green salsa right on top and this is beautiful and I'm just so glad that you guys had me on out here today. This has been a blast coming out here in the morning, being out here with you uh, now, just to talk about the event, because we're super excited. Now, it is a 21 plus event too. So you gotta make sure when you're coming out, it's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be full of kids. You're gonna have a lot of fun. It's an adult escape. I have a child, I love my son, but sometimes you gotta go have fun with the parents, it's right? It's an adult, <laughs> it's an adult event. That's right. And, and when, what can people expect? Just great food and a wide variety of foods? A wide variety of food, live music, DJ, plus voting for your favorite bite. And it's all supporting and benefiting the San Antonio Food Bank, which is huge. And they will be awarded a check there at the event as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Isn't that huge? Okay, date, time, and where to get tickets. All right, May 11th, Saturday, and it's gonna be at Smoke Sky Bar in downtown San Antonio. You can get tickets by going to TexasEatsTV.com or KSAT.com slash Texas Eats. And it's from one to four, but if you get the VIP, you get in an hour earlier. You can get there from 12 to four. Hey, am I a VIP? You're a VIP. I get in early. You're a very important, person. How's I was say Perry. <laughs> Perry. A, a, a very important Perry. Perry. Okay, <laughs> I want you to, to take a bite with me. I've okay. already done mine. All right, cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Viva. Mmm. Mmm.
That's it right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She I'm must be a very you important guys. person because so you You're actually so made her taco. You don't make my food for mm -hmm. me. You made hers, though. Way to go, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Now I know, no, now I know where I, I stand. No, I made my own taco. I know. Well, he put it all on there, spread you it. You assembled it all he's, on your own. He's uh, just jealous. No. Can I bring him one in the studio? Yeah, we're going to bring, yeah, we're gonna bring uh, all, everybody one in there. So okay. every, everybody's going to get a bite. Looks good. Way to go, Dave. <laughs> oh. Way to go. Right, I'm going to go back in for mine. Good stuff. I can smell it from here. You know, the so breeze was blowing a little bit. Ursula's hair moving around a little bit out there, like a little windy. But maybe the breeze is blowing the smoke right inside this building so we can get a at least a whiff of what that was going on out there. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that would be nice, right? I, I can almost smell it, though. It does look really good. Yeah, it does. Glad that we're getting some tacos in the studio. Hey, cloud covers there. We're going to see clouds for a little while longer before the sun comes out. The aquifer, not in good shape. It's down six tenths of a foot, 638.8 in your pollen count. Molds, they are down a little bit at 620, but oak jumps back up some to 230 in moderate category. Pecan and grass are low. Let's get you set for the rest of your week and that Fiesta forecast. We've got it for you coming up. You all right over there? I gotta get, I feel the get you a, got, I want to make sure I'm not on TV with you beef in my teeth. Toothpick or something? <laughs> <laughs> was, that, so was that tough getting back inside there, Ursula? You're all disheveled, so. Yeah. <laughs> the wind is blowing. I've got beef food in my teeth. Okay, I'm back. But we know the feeling. Yes, you got free food, though. Okay? I did. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right, question of the day. Mm -hmm. Of course, the week leading up to Fiesta. And oh. who better to present the question of the day than Miss Fiesta 2024, Sierra Davila? Welcome. We are going to hear more from her, but the question of the day is... What is your favorite Fiesta snack? Oh, that's, that's, is that's it chicken easy. on a stick, funnel cake, corn in a cup, turkey leg, gorditas or tacos, or mango navas? Ooh. Right now, funnel cake's in the lead, well, Choose tied with corn in a cup, so those are mm -hmm. pretty good. So we will we'll, we'll, we'll let yeah. you kind of stew on this a little bit and what mm -hmm. your favorite yeah. is. So, yeah, coming up. Chew on this. She heard him. Corn in a cup. Corn. Yes. Corn in a cup. We, we may yes. have a vote for corn in a cup over here. Yes. That's where yes. that uh, that one vote perhaps came from. Well, so tell her right. she could have some extra because I don't want mine. I want the funnel cake. Uh, All right. David said you can have extra corn in the cup, and he's going to take your funnel cake. So. <laughs> Perfect. That okay. works out. <laughs> you got a deal there, David. All right. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. We're going to hear from more, more from her coming up a little bit later on. Yes. So. so scan that QR code and weigh in, and we'll see how it shakes down uh, here on SA Live from Historic Market Square. Yep. Thank you, guys. I, I, I'll have another David Elder taco is wow. what I'll have. Yeah, okay. Mm. Maybe he'll be out there cooking some. He made it look so simple, and it really did taste like... Top taco. It looked good. The salsa especially. Salsa is my favorite vegetable. When you make salsa fresh, it makes all the difference in the world. It Just does. Saying. You don't want to, if, if you got to get it out of a packet, so be it. But and you can make it yourself. I, but we had fresh really dip today at nine. We had that too. Fresh it's, chips and all kinds of stuff. It's been a good food day. Yeah, and by the way, I agree. It's a good agree, day to be a KSAP. I agree with the majority there. Gorditas. That's my favorite. Ah. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, Fiesta is right around the corner. We're going to show you that forecast here in just a second. First, we've got to get through today. It's going to be a cloudy day, 77. And we've got south southeasterly winds at 15. Now, we are starting to see some breaks in the clouds, and I do think we'll see a little bit of sun this afternoon, but it's going to take some time. Those uh, morning low clouds, pretty stubborn. 22 mile per hour wind gusts as we head into the afternoon, 20 to 25, I'd say. And then the winds may pick up a little bit more this evening. You could see some gusts close to 30 miles per hour. It's that south wind that is just ushering in a ton of moisture. It is so very humid outside. When you get dew points in the upper 60s, that's when you get into the muggy territory. We've even had dew points in the 70s. Our friends out in Gonzales have, have a dew point of 72 right now. That's air you can wear. That's some thick air. And listen, uh, this is the kind of area you would expect in the spring. We haven't had a whole lot of it, though. So this is a bit of a change for us, I suppose. Uh, it's going to feel a little bit warmer than these actual temperatures when you start uh, factoring in that kind of uh, humidity. 84 is what we're calling for today. Now, clouds are going to have a big bearing on where we go with these temperatures. But I'm uh, forecasting just slightly lower temperatures because I think the clouds hang around just a little bit longer. Where we see more sun, and that certainly is possible down in the south and west, we'll have some 90s on the map a little bit later this afternoon. There is the satellite picture. Yeah, clouds are already breaking up around Katua, uh, Pleasanton. The sun is out. Here around Bear County, though, still seeing some clouds. The low clouds are trying to scatter. We've got some high clouds on top of that. 
but you can see some breaks off to the west, and so the sun will pop out here uh, fairly soon. Otherwise, we still got some clouds up around New Braunfels. Uh, Seguin still seeing cloud cover. Same for Uvalde with a few breaks trying to show up. And here's the bigger picture. You'll notice across Texas there's a lot of cloud cover, some rain up around the Red River. And then we've got a nice little swirl in the atmosphere here around Utah. That is the next storm system that will be pushing towards the middle part of the country. I wish I could tell you it would bring us good rain. It does not because it's so far to the north. All the action is going to be up here across parts of Kansas and Nebraska. That's where the risk for severe weather will be today. Uh, quite a pivot, in fact. And then along a dry line down into west Texas, there could be uh, some more storms in places like San Angelo, uh, Ozona, Abilene. But to our north and west, I think for the most part, any sort of severe weather stays away from us. It's not to say we couldn't see a little bit of rain out of this system. It's just we are on the very tail end of things. Let me take you to 6 o'clock dinner time, and there's not a lot out there, just uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies. But as we get into tonight, this is midnight. Shows a few showers trying to pop up. Uh, it'll be a few and far between. I think about a 20% chance of rain. Shows a few showers trying to work in around 2 a.m., and then maybe along this boundary early tomorrow morning. This boundary, by the way, gets to San Antonio, puts on the brakes and says, no thanks, it goes back to the north and falls apart. So we don't get any dry air out of this either. And by tomorrow afternoon, looks like a quiet scenario uh, before we get some more rain chances kicking in later this week. Let me show you the Fiesta forecast. We'll start on Thursday with Fiesta Fiesta getting underway. 80s is what we're calling for right now, 20% chance of a shower or storm. Now, if we do see a storm on Thursday, there is a small chance it could become strong. So I want to watch that closely, but all in all, I think we'll be okay. Uh, Friday, 80s, we got Oyster Bay, Taste of New Orleans, 20% chance of rain, 30% chance on Saturday. That may be our best odds at seeing some rain with a frontal boundary. But the good news here, if that front does indeed come through, we'll see some cooler weather by Sunday. Obviously, this is still pretty far out. These are preliminary numbers. That's the uh, idea right now. Here's the seven day forecast 86 on Tuesday, 89 Wednesday. It does get awful warm. Uh, and there are those small rain chances Thursday, Friday that we talked about. 30% chance Saturday. There comes the front. Cools us down some, and it would also mean some cooler weather potentially Sunday morning. The lows back in the 50s. Now that's what I'm talking about because it is sticky out there right now. Hey, what do you guys got over there? Over there. David. Okay, as promised, this is David Elder. The Beef elder finished product right there. Steak. Look at that. Tacos. Ooh, here, All right. There. There's Let three. So how many of us are here? Ooh, you already had one. So you get one of mine? <laughs> you get my extra? No, Justin's a growing boy over there. He yeah. probably could have two. Yeah. Look Mr. Gordita taco Look at that. Look choice at that. for <laughs> question of the day. Come on. Come on. Hey, oh. Come here on. We go. Oh, here we go. David Elder knows how to do it, man. See, that's nicely done. And the salsa. You don't, you don't <laughs> not going to eat that? I will, but I don't want to mess up the presentation. I'll get it in a second. <laughs> Commercial break. Commercial breaks come in handy <laughs> at times like this. Once again, this is David Elder at his finest. He's got his own food festival. He is on Cloud 9. You can get your tickets right now. Go to ksat.com, uh, Texas Eats. A lot of famous chefs are going to be there preparing food for you. There's going to be, uh, you get to vote for your favorites. And uh, again, it's coming right up in May. And another thing is they're going to be donating some of their proceeds to the food bank. Yes. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a reason to go right there, just the food and the food bank. And there's a VIP experience you can opt yeah. in for, so, so do it. Great day. Right so now. Get All right. Get your tickets. Eat. Okay. I've been waiting for you to say that. Thank you. You have permission. I'm going to get on my tie, though. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you need a napkin or something? Uh -uh. Okay. He knows how mm. to eat on TV. Okay, he can't talk now because that would be rude, so um, we'll be right back. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Which event is referred to as the founding event of Fiesta? Is it A, Niosa, B, the Battle of Flowers Parade, or C, the Fiesta Flambeau Parade? The answer after the break. Which event is referred to as the founding event of Fiesta? The answer is B, the Battle of Flowers Parade. We are just a few days away Ooh, from Fiesta okay. Fiesta. It's happening, the kickoff to the party with the purpose. It's going to be starting up Thursday night, our Fiesta Fiesta special. 
is coming up at Alamo Dome's HEB Plaza. And folks are also looking forward to all the Fiesta parades, of course. Here's some risers already being put up on some of the streets. These parades are going to go down. This is video from the past weekend of the benches located on Main Street and Cypress. That's the area where the Flambeau and Battle of Flowers Parade will go through. And if you want to make sure you have really good seats and some pretty good company, you can join us at our KSAT Fiesta parties for both the Battle of Flowers and the Flambeau. All you have to do is buy your tickets online right now. That'll give you grandstand seating and it's going to give you a chance to meet some of us as well. And if you can't make it downtown, we got you covered right here on KSAT 12. The Battle of Flowers Parade, we're broadcasting that live. That's coming up on the 26th. The Fiesta Flambeau Parade is on the 27th. So make sure you get your tickets now before we sell out. You can find all this information on our website as well. And although Fiesta is a lot of fun, finding parking mm -hmm. and navigating road closures can be a big headache. All right, so here's your options. It includes Park and Ride, V offering the services this week for Oyster Break and Taste of New Orleans. For Oyster Break, you can use the Crossroads Park and Ride. Pick up and drop off will be at Camino Santa Maria and Cincinnati Avenue. For Taste of New Orleans, you can also use Crossroads Park and Ride, as well as the Randolph Transit Center, pick up and drop off will be at Sunken Gardens. And the service will be available from Friday, April 19th to Saturday, April 27th for $1.30 each way. Discounts are available for students, seniors, military members, and other populations. And take a look at the Park and Ride uh, schedule and everything else right there on our website. Uh, everything you need to know about this service is there. New Today at 5, just like everyone else in your family, your furry members need coverage too when it comes to staying healthy. Pet medicine bills can be overwhelming if they don't have insurance. Where to get it? What's the best plan? It's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Outside with live cam, you still resting after that taco? You're okay? I might need a nap. Everything good? It was, it, this is <laughs> probably a pretty good day to get a nap. It's cloudy, it's kind of humid. Yeah, it was sticky out there and windy. Yeah, it, yeah, it's all those things. Uh, good napping weather, I agree with that though, uh, for sure. Uh, humidity <laughs> levels have jumped way up there, so it's going to be sticky for a long while. Probably into the weekend, we're talking dew points in the 60s, so it's, we're moving into that time of year where you might expect that. Uh, let me show you the time lapse. This is from earlier this morning through now, and uh, we've been hard pressed to find any breaks in those clouds. That's how this morning overcast generally works here around San Antonio. We're often one of the last places to see those clouds break, but they will. And I do think we'll see some sun this afternoon pushing temperatures into the 80s. You can see here on satellite picture that. Still a nice little cloud deck around Bear County. There are breaks, though, as you go south and east of town, south and west of town, and even north of town, there are a few breaks. So we're not far off from seeing the sun pop out here around town. Now, what about rain chances? We need some rain desperately. Uh, there is a small chance tonight going into early Tuesday morning, but I wouldn't get your hopes too, up too much about that because anything we see is going to be relatively light. Now, as we get into Thursday and Friday, there's a chance for thunderstorms, but they'll be isolated. It's that isolated afternoon stuff. Maybe our best shot is on Saturday with a frontal boundary. Still some questions, though, to timing when that front actually moves through and just how much rain it will generate. But uh, we have put a 30% chance uh, in the forecast for Saturday. We're going to talk more about that also about the oak season. It's finally coming to an end. That's something to get excited about. We'll have more on that in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Former President Donald Trump making history as his first, as the first president to go on trial for criminal charges. His arrival to the court, though, marked by defiance. The New York prosecutors accused Trump of false invoicing and ledger entries to hide hush money paid to an adult film star that he allegedly had an affair with. While the state claims this was done as a campaign cover-up, Trump has pleaded not guilty and denies the affair. He did not hide his dismay that he was forced into court today. This is political persecution. This is a persecution like never before. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. And again, it's a case that should have never been brought. If convicted, Trump could be sentenced to probation or a maximum sentence of approximately one to four years in state prison on each count. His defense team says it will prove that the alleged reimbursement payments were not related to the election in 2016. Trump failed to win a motion that presidents are immune from criminal charges. Major media organizations urging President Biden and former 
President Trump to go ahead and hold debates before November's election. About a dozen organizations posting an open letter yesterday. That letter argues debates play a vital role in presidential elections. The unusual move comes over uncertainty over whether the two candidates will face off face to face in on a stage together ahead of the vote. Biden has not publicly committed to debating Trump, although he has not yet ruled it out. Trump, though, has said he will debate Biden anytime, anywhere. However, the Republican National Committee withdrew from the Commission on Debates in 2022. Groups that signed the letter include CNN and Fox News, C-SPAN and NPR. Today is tax day, so you will still have a few hours to file your 2023 tax returns, but you better hurry. The agency is extending the deadline to those who are affected by the October 7th Israeli terrorist attacks. If you live or work in federally declared disaster areas, you'll get more time as well. If you owe and fail to file by the due date, the IRS is going to issue a 5% penalty for each month that you're late. Anyone who filed an extension will have until October 15th to file their taxes. You'll still be able to send your returns to the IRS electronically or by mail. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it's looking into the recent recall of Ford Bronco and escape vehicles. The agency says the cars could have cracked fuel injectors that can cause gas leaks that ignite engine fires. Nearly 43,000 SUVs made in 2022 and 2023 are impacted. So far, new injuries have been reported by the National Highway Transportation Safety Association. This is it. Today, the last day, eligible Verizon wireless users can sign up for money from a legal settlement. The funds are for customers who used Verizon services between January of 2016 and November of last year. They can get up to $100 by signing up online or through the mail. The lawsuit alleges Verizon deceptively charged fees, which the company, though, denies. People who accept the payouts lose any right to sue Verizon over this issue in the future. We are learning more about that unprecedented attack by Iran against Israel. More than 100 ballistic missiles launched this weekend and swarms of drones. Overnight, however, ABC News confirming that at least half of those missiles either failed before or during the launch or even crashed prior to reaching their targets. ABC's Alexis Christophorus explains, the question now is, what will Israel do in response? Israel weighing its response to Iran's attack after it launched more than 300 missiles and drones targeting military installations, some streaking right over the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. But according to the IDF, Israel's missile defense system, along with a combined international effort, intercepted 99 percent of those threats, including more than 100 ballistic missiles. The president, in his conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, did reiterate that it was a tremendous success for Israel Saturday night. Not just the military superiority that they showed, but they showed they're not alone. The Pentagon calling it an enormous success. U.S. forces taking out nearly 90 drones and missiles long before they reached Israel's borders. President Biden praising those airmen on the phone Sunday. It made an enormous difference, potentially saving a lot of lives. The key to Israel's success is its multi-layered aerial defense system. This includes the Iron Dome, which specializes in short-range rockets. David Sling, meant to intercept medium-range projectiles, and the Arrow designed for long-range missiles. I think it did show, it did demonstrate uh, that Iran uh, is not uh, the power that it uh, purports to be, that it doesn't have that same military superiority. Kirby, however, urging caution, adding Iran has a large military and Israel, along with its allies, needs to stay vigilant. Iran says it considers the matter closed. An Israeli official tells ABC it will respond at the time and place of its choosing. The U.S. is privately telling officials if Israel strikes back militarily, it will do so alone. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Outside with live cam, these are the kind of clouds you just wish you could reach up and grab and twist and you just get some rain out. It, Do whatever you have to get some rain out. I mean, that's just look like a rain cloud. He wants to wrestle a rain cloud. Yeah, that'd be nice. Do what you can do, David. I'm, I'll send me up there. Oh, boy. We do need just like a good, good rainstorm to wash all the pollen out of the air, uh, fill up the aquifer. It's not in the forecast. We have some rain chances, but I don't think it's going to be one of those. 77 so far today. The average is 80, so it'll be above average, but it could be worse. 95 is a record high set back in 2006. 
We are forecasting some 90s, at least for parts of the area this week. We'll talk about where and when coming up. I still got that stuff in my... <laughs> that taco is awesome. I... You do need a toothpick. Do I? Yeah. All right. We'll take care of that while you do weather. You got a little cilantro right got there. Got a little something, something right there. <laughs> Just kidding. You know what that means? What does it that mean? It is good. That's what ah, that yes. Yeah. That's true. Sticking Perfect. with you. Uh, yes, those tacos. <laughs> Man, top notch. Uh, one thing that uh, we're not so excited about has been the oak pollen. Look, we're on the backside of things. At oak jumped up a little bit today. It's moderate at 230. But if you just look at the trees, you can see that we've pretty much made our way through oak season. Uh, piles and piles of the leaves and the little catkins still lying around. Uh, but I think the uh, trees are kind of done pollinating here. If you look at oak season, it typically peaks in early April. We're past the peak. We're somewhere right here. And as the uh, month winds down, you should see the pollen numbers continue to come down. So if oak season is one of those that gets to you, that's a bit of good news. We're through the worst of it. Uh, as we go outside for you, we've got uh, cloudy skies still. Looks like there's a few peaks of sun trying, trying to uh, develop there at the airport, but we haven't seen much. 77 at the airport, close to 80 in Seguin, 73 Bernie, 76 in Kerrville. And we've got a south southeasterly wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour in gusty. Know that winds will be gusty throughout the rest of today. We'll see some gusts close to 30 by late this afternoon. Your forecast calls for a high right around 85, still plenty warm once that sun comes out, especially. Then as we get into tonight, we get to add in some rain chances, 20%. Starting at around 10 p.m. and continuing through midnight and into early tomorrow morning. As I said earlier, this is going to be few and far between. There are going to be some showers around, I think, but they're not going to produce a ton of rain. And it's, uh, it's not going to be a lot of coverage. So uh, just know that. Dew point trend over the next six days. Just when we thought dew points couldn't go any higher, they do. We'll be up near 70 by Wednesday and Thursday as we start Fiesta. Of course, humidity is going to be around. Uh, dew points in the 70s, that's really muggy air. We're going to continue to see the humid conditions all the way through Saturday. Now, after Saturday, I do think dew points will drop down because we get a front. Uh, satellite and radar shows we've got some severe weather starting to take shape there on the east coast. There is a severe thunderstorm watch box just south of the nation's capital. And you see some showers there across the Red River, uh, far west Texas, although probably some of that's not reaching the ground. Uh, but it shows you we still got somewhat of an active pattern here across Texas. Now, most of the activity today is going to be to our north, parts of Nebraska and Kansas, really under the gun this afternoon for the threat for severe weather. And that threat goes all the way down into Texas, tails into Texas, but still to our north. We're just too far south to get any really good energy here. So as far as severe weather goes, it's going to be to our north and west San Angelo, Brownwood, Abilene. Those are areas that could see a few storms this afternoon. And again, we are calling uh, for a couple of showers overnight. It's just that uh, they will be isolated, and I don't think the threat for severe weather is really there. This is midnight, shows a couple of showers, shows a few more around 2 a.m. And then as this front gets a little bit closer, maybe a couple of showers tomorrow morning. That's it. And then this front basically reverses course, and we don't get any benefits from that. It doesn't dry out. We don't get lower humidity. And tomorrow, with the front basically washing out or going away, we're not going to have any rain chances. So rain chances look like this. Small chance tonight into uh, very early Tuesday morning, and then some more small chances Thursday, Friday, with perhaps our best opportunity on Saturday with another frontal boundary, and that should clear us out some for Sunday. Uh, 89 Wednesday, 89 Thursday will be hot and humid as Fiesta begins. Thankfully, with that front on Saturday, it should cool us down some. And in fact, we could see temperatures in the 70s by Sunday. We'll be right back. All right, so we have one of the queens. So, so now we have the beauty. Well, and Fiona, of course. Yeah. And, and the beast. And I'm the not, beast. Yeah, we're so <laughs> <laughs> and we got a food question. <laughs> ah, yes, we do. And we've got a good chef with some great food, too. That's right. Chef Leo Davila, owner of Sticks and Stone, is here. And uh -huh. you recently went to China. Yes. And tell us what this is. So, Tangulu. So, it's a street food snack. At 7 a.m., they're trying to feed me these at different vendors. So, basically, it's a sugar covered fruit. Um, oh, you wow. get it to like a candy stage. It's nice, it's crackly. 
It's just delicious. Delicious. Speaking of delicious, mm -hmm. you have your own take on a good fiesta food, right? Yeah, yeah. So we do chicken on a stick all year long. This is just something, a little bite sized snack that everybody can kind of grab and mingle with your friends and family. All right. Fiesta food. That is our question presented by none other than Miss Fiesta. Fiesta. Here on Davila. What's the question? What is your favorite Fiesta food? And we're going to hit her up. We already kind of have a hint on what her favorite Fiesta food is. You know you can get all those great Fiesta foods at Nyosa. <laughs> yes. And Patty Zayats is here. All right, Nyosa in, in the past couple of years, all the construction down there, what's going on this year? This year we're great. The city's been wonderful working with us and we have our footprint. It's our original footprint. We haven't deviated from that. We'll have our same gate entrances. So we're really excited to be on board. All right, wonderful. All that fiesta coming up, and we're going to see her at Fiesta Fiesta on Thursday, too. So can't wait for that. And we're going to introduce you to an organization that is pairing service dogs with kids in need. Yes, that, and great, great organization. We do hear about this. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. So stick around.